Thanks to Mira Safety for sponsoring this video. Visit their link below or suffer dire consequences. The year is 2135, and the world has become a dynamic and ever-changing place. As corporations and governments begin to tighten their fist, civil unrest becomes all the more common. And as riots begin to sweep across the nations of the world, having a gas mask close at hand starts to look like a better and better idea. Well, I'm from the future, and of course, your world looks nothing like that. The theme of today's conversation is that everyone's case of use is going to be different. But sure, not everyone is a cybernetically augmented corporate mercenary like myself. Even all of the people that work here at the Interlink Corporation are different. Everyone has their roles to fill. But a gas mask like the Mira Safety CM7M it's never a bad idea to have one close at hand. Mira Safety makes two really popular gas masks. One of them is the CM7M and the other is the CM6M, which was popularized in the movie Tenet. Now, believe me, that was the one I originally wanted to review when Mira Safety reached out to me, but the CM7M is the one that is recommended for use with firearms, and I felt like that catered more toward my interest as well as all of you beautiful employees. Really, the big separation between the two masks is the profile, the CM6M, uh, has a more exaggerated front end and is more intended for general use. This mask is more shaped like the human face, which can make it easier to get a cheek weld on some kind of long gun. Just to quickly kind of set the parameters for today's conversation, uh, this channel is typically dedicated to airsoft replicas and other tactical gear that's really intended to be used on the airsoft field. Uh, the CM7M is a piece of real equipment. This is something that is really intended to protect you from real airborne threats uh, and potentially even save your life. I don't take testing or reviewing a product like this lightly, uh, which is why I'm gonna try to steer the conversation more toward things that uh, I've actually tested with this mask. Um, things like the filter and the actual filtration qualities of that, um, I'm, we're not gonna talk about. Them. Today, we're primarily gonna be looking at the mask itself the features that it has, and how it performs in the field as a piece of tactical equipment. After this video, check out some other reviews. Go and read stuff that people have written. Go and check out the other tests that are here on YouTube featuring the CM7M or other products from Mira Safety. I think, especially with you know potentially life-saving equipment like this, it's really important to get some diversified perspectives on the product. Don't just listen to me. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the features that the CM7M has. So as opposed to the wide visor as seen on the CM6M, this one has binocular lenses. You've got two instead of one. What that does when you're wearing it is you do lose some of your peripheral vision. So you do have kind of these like uh, rings around there, but they overlap in the middle and they actually give you a great field of view. It doesn't feel nearly as claustrophobic as you might think. So you can run this mask with two filters. You have a plug on either side for a 40 millimeter or PAPR filter. Um, on this one, I have the NBC 77 SOF from Mira. Um, I asked them to send this out just so that we could kind of test what it's like to wear this mask in the configuration you'd expect to use it in. You do have a plug on the other side, which is covered up by this little plastic cap. You can unscrew that and you can run this mask with two filters. But you just gotta remember that when you are using two filters, your mask is only as good as the lowest rating uh, on the filter. It's not gonna pull selectively from either one, it's gonna pull from both at the same time. This component on the front isn't a vent, it's actually a speaker. And when you're communicating with this, uh, this diaphragm in here is actually what kind of projects your voice. There's this kind of weird little noodle on the front, and this can be hooked up to an included canteen. 
So, if you needed to wear this mask for a very long period of time, you can actually drink without having to take the mask off. It is a specialized hookup, so it is nice that Mira includes that with the mask itself. Down below is your exhaust vent. Uh, this comes with a plastic cover, a little slit in the back, so when you're wearing the mask, um, it's actually all that CO2 that you're breathing out is going back into your chest. I think the idea there is that it's keeping the, uh, the warm air that you're breathing out out of your workspace, which would be directly in front of you. You have five straps, one, two, three, four, five, and those are elastic and connected to a mesh backer. Once you have the mask on, these elastic straps are really easy to tighten onto your face. And then once you have it attached, you're ready to go. The way that you put a gas mask on is going to differ based on what model you have, but generally what I found is that you want to put the actual mask part on first and then pull the strap behind your head. There we go. I mean, you gotta admit, it looks pretty cool with the hood. While I was doing research on how to actually wear a gas mask, one thing that I came across was what's called a purge test or a purge check. You're basically doing a test once you put the mask on to purge any potentially contaminated air from inside the mask. And also check to make sure that you've got a good seal on your mask. It should be good pressure. I have some resources for this because I'm probably not going to be able to show you exactly how it's supposed to go. The best way that I found to kind of do a purge test is to wrap my hand around that little exhaust port in the bottom and blow out. And then you cover up your filter when you breathe in. And when you get that good suction, that means that your mask is fitted properly. The big thing to remember when you're wearing a gas mask is that the rubber of the mask should make a perfect seal all the way around your face. It should be rubber touching skin. There shouldn't be anything in the way. That includes any kind of face masks like I was wearing before, any kind of hair like your bangs, and it also includes beards. So if you have a really big beard, you're probably not going to be able to wear a gas mask properly because nothing can interfere with that seal. That's so that contaminants from the outside don't get in. If they get in, you're basically compromised. You'll notice in some of this B-roll, I'm actually wearing a balaclava, but that balaclava is over the top of my gas mask. It is not underneath. If I was wearing that balaclava underneath, it'd be interfering with the seal. You don't want to do that. One thing I've been trying to implement into a lot more of our reviews is uh, trying to use the equipment under stress. You know, it might look kind of silly out there doing uh, pitiful burpees, <laughs> but I think it's important to use the equipment how it's actually intended to be used. And something I wanted to test was, can I use this gas mask uh, while under physical stress? When I was testing the CM7M, I tested it with both real firearms and with airsoft replicas, which is obviously my field of expertise. <laughs> I used it multiple times with the GNG F2000. Now, the F2000 has a much thicker profile for the stock. It's not like your typical kind of slim M4 stock. And I was actually really impressed by how easy it was to get a good cheek weld with this and acquire a sight picture. I think the binocular lenses do help you, uh, I guess, kind of mimic the way that your eyes actually work. I was able to very quickly acquire the reticle of my, uh, of my optic and get shots onto uh, the targets that I was aiming at. While I did find it easy to aim and get a cheek weld with this, one thing that was difficult to do was to get a sight picture with the lower profile iron sights. Could I get a good sight picture with the iron sights? Sure, but I had to kind of crush my face down onto the stock, you know, creating uneven pressure on the mask. And that's just not really good practice with the gas mask. Wearing it, you know, you are wearing a mask and it's gonna raise your head up higher than it would naturally fall on your stock. Because of that, I think you kind of have to use uh, either a riser or a higher profile optic like this replica T1. I also use this with a hollow sun sight that has a very similar profile to this. Uh, if you are planning on using a rifle with a gas mask, you know, go in with the expectation that your accessories are probably gonna have to complement the gas mask because you're introducing uh, more material to your face and you're gonna have to deal with that cheek weld issue.
I tested what it was like to look through a magnified optic with all of the, uh, the different replicas that I have back here, as well as a higher quality scope on a real rifle. Um, it's not hard to look down the optic uh, with you know, adequate eye relief, provided it's a decent scope. The one thing that is hard to do is because these magnified optics tend to be mounted lower on the rifle, it's hard to see them, similar to using iron sights or one of those lower uh, profile red dots. Wearing the CM7M, wearing gas masks uh, in general and doing physical activity, these introduce uh, resistance to your breathing. These masks have to hold pressure so that they don't pop off your face when you breathe out. Um, and also you're breathing through, you know, effectively uh, an air filter. So it is more difficult to bring air in and it's difficult to push air out. Um, it's not extremely difficult. And like I said, it's, it's not difficult to wear this at rest, but when you introduce a higher heart rate, more respiration, uh, more labored breathing, you really start to feel it. And so when I did my first set of shooting drills, I just did five burpees, ran down to the target, ran back, and then I fired from uh, standing, kneeling, and prone positions. Uh, my breathing was crappy. <laughs> I wasn't really focusing on when I was drawing breaths. Um, and I realized that toward the end of that drill, I actually started getting lightheaded because I, I wasn't controlling my breathing. When I did the second drill, I tried really intentionally uh, bringing air in and pushing air out. And what I found was that that actually really helped. Uh, I felt like I was getting more oxygen into my body. Uh, and so even when I was doing that run down and when I was running back, I felt like I was way more clear headed. So when I picked up my replica to finish that drill, um, I, it just went that much better than that first drill. And it was really interesting to see that. Again, you're gonna have to deal with the resistance on a quality gas mask like the CM7M. Uh, but I think this highlights the importance of training with the gear that you expect to use. That gas mask is never gonna get easier to breathe in. The thing that's gonna improve is you spending time with that gear on the field. When I took this out for the on-camera testing, it was about 25 degrees outside. So not the coldest, but it was cold enough so that breathing out, uh, especially in a mask like this, was gonna cause condensation issues. It would fog goggles, you know, doing high physical activity outside, especially like on the air south field, your goggles are gonna fog in that kind of weather. I was extremely impressed by the fact that this mask never fogged, not a single time. Um, was there condensation buildup inside the mouthpiece? Absolutely. You know, I'm out there, I'm running around, doing push-ups and things like that. The only thing that we noticed was when I took the mask off toward the end, there was a droplet of condensation that kind of rode around the outside of the rim. Not once did I have any issues seeing through the eyepieces, not once did I have any issues with fog building up on those lenses. Going out there and trying to push the gear as much as I could uh, and not having any fogging issues, uh, you know, that's an A plus for me. Like I said at the top, I only want to talk about things that I experienced with this mask while I was testing it. I cannot scientifically test the NBC 77 filters. I can't prove the results that the mirror safety sheet has. Uh, I do have some anecdotal evidence. We use two uh, of the high yield Enola Gay smoke grenades. Um, you've probably seen them if you played a lot of airsoft. When we pop that smoke, that smoke has a very distinct smell. It's very strong. When I put the mask on and I walked through uh, the plumes of smoke as I was walking through those clouds, um, not only did the smoke not affect my eyes at all, I mean, it's basically like wearing goggles in a swimming pool. You can see right through it. When I was wearing this thing, I did not smell that smoke at all. When I took the mask off, um, I realized that my clothes reeked of the stuff. <laughs> it was, it was kind of crazy. Um, and even on the inside of this, this is the filter that we used for the test. You can see um, this caught a lot of the purple residue uh, from that smoke when I was walking through it. It's not rated to filter out carbon monoxide. There's specific molecular and chemical things that are beyond me <laughs> with, uh, with all of that. And they do make specific filters for smoke escape. Um, this is not one of those. Another thing that I kind of learned with gas masks is, um, is you know, you want your gas mask to give you a quality seal, but really the filtration quality of it depends entirely on your filter. 
Uh, so depending on what kind of threats you anticipate encountering, it is good to maybe actually have kind of a medley of different filters uh, to have with your gas mask. The CM7M from Mira Safety is most definitely corporate approved. Again, not everybody's case of use is going to be the same, but for me, uh, this product is extremely impressive. Not only do I plan on keeping this thing around for a long time, but I also plan on doing more training with it. I, I think it was really cool to see it in action. And not only that, uh, it seemed to be incredibly effective at what it set out to do. Unfortunately, these filters are single use. You don't want to use them after they have been opened. Um, but I plan on restocking them and actually keeping this thing on hand. You might not feel like you need a gas mask, but if owning a gas mask is something you have considered and you maybe want to do some rifle training with it, I think the CM7M is a great fit. I don't think you can go wrong with this one. Don't breathe in nerve gas. Stay corporate approved.